Hey guys, Zena Geezer here. In today's video, we're going to talk about the differences in cranks, seat posts, and seat clamps. And away we go. All right, we're going to talk about seat post clamps. There seems to be a little confusion out there as to what size fits what. All you really need to know is what the outer diameter is of the seat tube of your particular unicycle. Doesn't matter what size the seat post is, for example, all Nimbus unicycles take a 25.4 millimeter seat post, while all Chris Home unicycles and some other brands take 27.2 millimeter seat posts. So you would think the larger seat post would take a larger clamp and the smaller seat post would take a smaller clamp. That's not true and that's where the confusion comes in. In actuality, it doesn't matter what size diameter the seat post is. All that matters is what is the diameter of the seat tube right here. Now, all Nimbus aluminum frame unicycles, like the Hatchet and the Oracle, they all use the same size seat post clamp as the Chris Home, 31.8, because the frame is thicker than their chromoly frames. The easiest way to determine what size seat post tube you have is to get yourself a pair of calipers. I picked these up at Harbor Freight for about three bucks. Great tool to have and they work. Always measure the seat tube toward the top because some frames are wider at the bottom. So from the top, give it a measurement. In this case, it's 31.8. So that takes the exact same size seat post clamp as the Chris Home. By the way, these should really be called seat tube clamps, not seat post clamps, because they go directly over the seat tube. By the way, if you don't happen to have a pair of calipers handy, another way that's just as accurate to determine what size seat post clamp you're gonna need is to get a piece of painter's tape and wrap that around the seat post until it's exactly end to end. Take it off and measure it. Now, if it comes out to 100 millimeters in length, which is the circumference, 100 millimeters in length means you need a 31.8 millimeter seat post clamp. If it comes out to 90 millimeters in length, after you wrap it around, then you would need the 28.6 millimeter seat post clamp. So once again, all the Nimbus chromoly frame unicycles, for instance, this is my old Oregon, which I have and still love, all the chromoly frame Nimbus take the 28.6 millimeter seat post clamp, right? That's the smaller one, and yet they still take the same 25.4 millimeter seat post as all Nimbus unicycles. And again, just give it a measurement, and by the way, the outer diameter of the chromoly nimbus is 28.6 and that's how you would order the seat post clamp. Just a quick tip on seat posts, when you first buy them they're usually too long so you end up having to cut off excess so you can write it at its lowest position. The problem is, is that sometimes people end up taking off too much seat post and they end up with a post that's too short. So what I suggest is finding the point at which you can ride the highest comfortably Get yourself a marker and mark it right where it goes into the seat tube. And then remove the post, measure another two inches below that first line, and mark that. Everything below that second line you can cut off safely, and then you'll have a seat post that you can ride at the highest position and the lowest position. By the way, the best way to cut a seat post is with a pipe cutter. And these work really well. You can also use a hacksaw but either way you're still gonna have to file it smooth because you'll have a little rough edge on the bottom there. There's a couple different types of seat post clamps. The standard double bolt right here which is the most secure and the single bolt which works pretty well too depending on what you're doing. Um, there's also the quick release which I really like. This one's made by Nimbus. It's a quick release double bolt which is really cool and when it's on the seat tube you simply turn the knobs until you can feel some resistance and try to get them even. Close the top one or the bottom one first. I usually close the top one first and then the bottom one, making sure that the pressure feels the same on both so you get a good, even, secure fit there. Now, if it gets to the point where you can't unclamp it, if it's, if it's just too tight, then you can use a six millimeter hex to loosen it just enough so you can open it again. But these work really great from Nimbus. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about cranks and hubs. When I first started riding back in the mid-60s, I had this Schwinn made out of Chicago, all steel and very heavy and also very weak. And this particular unicycle utilized the cottered crank, which has long become obsolete. Over time, the cotter pin 
would get rounded off and as you can see no amount of tightening would would keep it from moving like that as you can see the axle is round and there's no axle bolt going in the center what you would use after you put the crank on you would then insert the cotter pin which is slightly tapered and that would hold the crank onto the axle. The problem was after a while that cotter pin would round off and no matter how much you tighten that bolt you'd have all this play. So that wasn't a very good system but that's all we had you know way back when. Well there's been quite a lot of improvement in unicycle technology since the 60s. The two main types of cranks available today and in regular use are the square taper or cotterless crank and these are perfectly fine for riding around town and not doing anything too extreme but don't use it for anything extreme like doing drops because they will round off. The second type of crank and the strongest system that we have today is called Isis Drive. As you can see it's a splined type of an axle made of hardened chromoly and this is super strong. I've done drops you know five six feet and over technical terrain and they're still strong and like new and this utilizes the center bolt right here. It's a strong system. Sometimes Isis cranks and square taper cranks are a little bit hard to remove by hand once you've removed the axle bolt, in which case I suggest getting a park tool like this one, crank remover. You'll notice the disc on the end of this one. This is a disc that screws onto the end and is specifically made for Isis drive cranks. For square taper cranks, just remove this disc, it unscrews, and you can remove the square taper crank the same way. Thanks for watching everybody and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.